This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices fell on Monday, hit by a stronger dollar and investor concerns over the possibility of quicker than expected increases to interest rates by the U.S. Federal Reserve. Brent crude fell $1.42, or 1.6%, to $86.47 a barrel by 14.30 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate, WTI, crude dropped $1.70, or 2%, to $83.44. The dollar rose to a two-week high on Monday against a basket of currencies, lifted by the tension between Russia and the West over Ukraine and the possibility of a more hawkish stance from the Fed this week. The European Union's draft plan to label gas and nuclear plants as green investments risks causing confusion and misstated financial disclosures, expert advisers to the bloc said amid criticism of the proposal from some lawmakers and nations. In feedback due to be published on Monday, the experts urged EU authorities to rewrite the draft rules, which they said would label gas plants with relatively high CO2 emissions as sustainable, as well as new nuclear plants launched too late to help meet the bloc's 2050 climate target. The specialist advisers, whose views were reported in a leaked draft on Friday, said the proposal would make it hard for investors to assess which investments are truly climate friendly. The question that the EU's sustainable finance taxonomy was designed to provide a clear answer on. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Around 30 oil and gas facilities across the Permian Basin in Texas and New Mexico spewed large amounts of methane for three years emitting the equivalent climate pollution from half a million cars, according to a report released on Monday. The facilities, which include well pads, pipelines, compressor stations and processing facilities, were observed as persistently emitting large volumes of methane over the three years of aerial surveys done by the Environmental Defence Fund and research group Carbon Mapper. These so-called superemitters, located in the most productive US oil field, only account for 0.001% of the Permian Basin's oil and gas infrastructure but emit around 100,000 tonnes of methane per year. Indonesia's short-lived ban on exporting coal has sent ructions through the seaborne market for the fuel in Asia, with the fallout likely to last beyond the initial shortage of available cargoes. The short-term impact of the sudden ban announced on January 1 by the world's largest exporter of the polluting fuel was to send prices for cargoes from other major shippers soaring back toward last year's record highs. The longer-term impact is that the key planks of being cheap and reliable, promoted by the coal industry in its battle for survival against cleaner energy alternatives, are seriously undermined. Next, we have the top news in metal. Gold prices steadied on Monday as tensions over Ukraine buoyed its safe haven allure, while investors held off on big moves ahead of a Federal Reserve meeting this week that could provide clues on the U.S. central bank's interest rate trajectory. Spot gold was little changed at $1,832.60 per ounce by 10.10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 15.10 GMT. U.S. gold futures rose 0.1% to $1,833.10. At its two-day meeting starting on Tuesday, the Fed is expected to announce that it will tighten monetary policy at a much faster pace than thought previously to tame persistently high inflation. Iron ore prices fell on Monday as traders turned cautious ahead of the Spring Festival holidays and Beijing Winter Olympic Games, shrugging off a further liquidity easing move by China's central bank. Iron ore's most traded May contract on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange ended daytime trading 1.7% lower at 740 yuan a ton, after stretching last week's rally up to 771 yuan and 50 fen in early trade, its highest since October 13. The steel-making ingredients' most active March contract on the Singapore exchange fell 2.7% to $133.30 a ton, as of 0707 GMT, after touching a contract high of $141.40 a ton earlier in the session. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Russian wheat export prices fell last week as the ruble weakened against the dollar, taking a hit from fears related to a standoff between Moscow and the West over Ukraine, analysts said on Monday. 
The West fears Russia may invade its neighbor. Russia denies planning an attack, but says it could take unspecified military action if a list of demands are not met. Russian stocks fell and wheat prices in Chicago rose last week amid these tensions. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.